work study took up the entire winter break. It's not over, is it? Felt like it was over in a flash. I want more. Yeah, it was over in a flash. Our first year at UA seemed like it flown by, and suddenly flown by. <laughs> three months left. In other words, eight seasons. We'll each share our accomplishments, challenges, etc. from over the winter break. I used to think this kind of exercise was stupid, like this whole reflection thing. But if you can stomach it, I actually think it's amazing. I like I can trace a lot of big changes in my life the last couple of years to writing things down in this way. Like I have a detailed goals list for the year, and then also I make the monthly. And one interesting thing I've noticed about that is that my my year accomplishments almost never line up or line up maybe like 20-30% with the goals I set for the year. However, just having a focus that I need to do something and working on things allows me to like run a natural course, but that course is forward. And I end up being very pleased with the, the results typically, even if it's not what I initially conceived the year to be. And another thing that's been really helpful along these lines is writing down fantasies or really huge dreams that give me a lot of excitement to think about. And then also writing down things that I think were weak, very similar to what Ida was just saying. I think the resistance I had to doing that for a long time was that it sort of seemed obvious, like, yeah, yeah, I already know like what my weaknesses are and I already know what I want, but there's something about writing it down or articulating it orally to other people that makes it more crystal clear and eliminate some of the shadows. I mean, YouTube, this whole channel is a result of some of these exercises. An auspicious new year, sir. I've apprised them of the schedule per your instructions. Good. He's such a great choice as class president. It was just one week, but he talked well. <laughs> Look at him, he's just up. <laughs> work hard without being uptight. Ooh. Yeah. No, that's not. Go back to the old. Okay. We don't. We didn't need the hip gyration. Mr. Isaac, we already love you, Please though. report to the staff room immediately. I'm sure this will be great. It won't be about child soldier training. Yeah, that new style is great on you. But the only compliment she really wanted was from Deku. Hey, what you got in here? Is that Deku's Christmas gift? This ended up being significant. Everyone knows, just stop hiding it. We all know. Yeah. It's not what you think, Ashido! It's exactly what everyone thinks and has been thinking for four seasons. I promise. Huh? I'm just um Liar. <laughs> right. It safe. Like you would something that a crush gave you. But it's strong. <laughs> no! Midoriya! Bakugo! Well, he's dead What's now. Your problem, stupid? Pretty ripped. Basically, I gotta make my body move as fast as my body. Bakugo just gave him a lobotomy. The symbol of sweet. The sense of speed is too different. Did you just ignore All Might? I'm very upset. I'm very upset about this. This is not what I expect from 1A. Uh, they're getting too big for themselves. <laughs> what, you have one internship? You think you're, you're too good for everyone? This is upsetting. And I am here, the symbol of sweet. Get it? Sweet. He's really doubling down on this symbol of sweets thing. Can't you make this thing go any faster? Nothing oh crap, I meant to read relax. Vigilantes. Should I read it now? Alright, so I just finished reading Vigilantes chapters 59 through 65. It was a lot shorter and also a lot better than I thought. Things I learned about Aizawa. He struggled from crippling doubt and sort of an identity crisis that he resolved through a traumatic incident that gave him focus and purpose and clarity on who he was. His taking on Shinzo as a pupil hits a lot closer to home, knowing his insecurities about his own role, his own quirk. Yue has always been Yue, and Aizawa is carrying on the legacy of what his teachers gave to him. He was friends with early Mirio, old school Mirio, and he got his goggles from early Mirio, who had a cloud quirk. He also interned under Prince, like actually Prince. It's Prince, if you look at it. The loss of his friend early Mirio explains to a large degree his focus on the practical. He was said to be a really good student, but after the incident where he lost early Mirio, he started phoning in the academic part and started focusing in on the practical fighting element of it and training really hard on his own. And I mean, who wouldn't after an experience like that? Although it was a traumatic event, it seems to be the thing that connected him very clearly to his vision of himself and also made some of the more painful elements or the elements of himself that he doubted become points of strength in his own eyes, where he proved himself to himself, basically, and also got a clear vision of what the stakes are and why it's important. Also, he really loves cats. And he, the guy really loves cats a lot. That was a very odd flashback for me in this viewing experience, but... I, for one, refuse to believe it. I bet Mr. Sukauchi and the others have just got it wrong. What was this meeting about? Is Cloud Mirio still alive? Is Cloud Mirio a villain? No mu truly are puppets. They're marionettes with no will of their own. I love how like Grand Trino just has his fingers in, in everything always. So let's get to the point, shall we? Whatever it is, we're very upset. It took us a long time to figure out what was going on. That looks like uh, Kogiri or whatever. It belonged to a kid you were quite familiar with in your UA days. A young boy who lost his life way too soon while working to save others. It is Mirio. It is Claude Mirio. The guy who gave eyes all his goggles. He's, whoa, more of a hero than anyone. Here's the Once backstory. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were going to make their own agency. We should start a hero agency. Right. <laughs> 
When Oboro Shirakumo died, he and I were doing our work study together. Right. He got caught in a collapsing building. Saving kids. He dreamed of the three of us starting an agency, but died right after sharing those plans with us. It's a crazy bond between Aizawa and President Mike. Do you want to know why we often attack UA? It's simple, really. Where else can one find such a concentration of outstanding quirks? A rather logical strategic move, don't you think? Yep, they do have a huge target on their backs. Take the Nomu that Endeavor defeated in Kyushu. The report says it had a distinct personality and that it displayed a hyperfixation on powerful fighters. Yeah, now I'm wondering like who, who the other Nomus were. So they're actually people. I didn't even realize that. I thought they were just completely engineered from the ground up. I fought Kurogiri at UA. He spoke completely differently than Shirakumo, and he didn't have any notable reaction to me. Right, that's true. This fight in season one takes on new life now. It's weird seeing them so like shook up and somber. So what, should we talk about old times? Try anything. This family? Talk about the you two can't get through to hero agency him, plan. I'm going to ask them to see him next. Where's Midnight? She was in the comic too. Are you concerned about Shigaraki? Indeed, it's my duty to look after him. <laughs> he brought the cat to school that one day. The kind of guy who would take in a stray kitten. Right, after I saw I left them. Pointedly him. ignored it. Right, he's a caretaker. Hi, I'm Shirakuma. So nice to meet you, Shota, buddy. <laughs> Shota, the cafeteria seats are gonna fill up. Come on, I'll lend you my goggles. There is a very like Mirio Tambaraki vibe. From the two of them. Never worrying about consequences. Despite the fact that a single misstep would mean your death. I've been incredibly strict with my students. Word on the street is you expel quite a few of them. That's another thing too. No wonder he's so critical and no wonder he doesn't allow for like the fun pleasantries and games that go with training. Because he's seen firsthand what happens when it goes wrong. And 1A, I mean they've seen things go down, but they haven't suffered a loss like Aizawa's suffered. So it's a different perspective. Probably to keep him alive in Aizawa's eyes. Sacrifice for others is different than throwing your life away. When these naive kids get the two mixed up, I can expel them. Give them a little death so they'll learn. Then I'll re-enroll them. That way they know oh, he's actually and they'll strive to reach even higher. Super thoughts about this too, internally. This was really wise to trust Aizawa's compass. I didn't want them to make the same fatal mistake you did. Exactly. At the same time, I wanted them to be like you. I wanted to shape them into heroes who motivate and inspire. I get it. We can still do it. We can be heroes. Hero agency. He's agitated. It's getting in. When you attacked UA, did you really feel nothing at all? I don't. I it's short circuiting. You're over, Oshirakubo! I am Kurogiri. But, 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 that can't be it. That can't be it, right? His brain waves. Quiet. Oh, there he is. What a reunion. Hospital. We got something? We got something, right? We got something out of that. Besides the sadness. Your eyes okay? They're a bit dry, but no big deal. <laughs> a terrible day for rain, am I right? <laughs> Sorry we couldn't be of more use or if it was a waste. No, far from it. That's okay. It narrows it down to only about 8,000 buildings. It's huge. It's super helpful. I mean, let me give you another hint. The Nomus are made in a place. My sole concern here is ensuring there will be no further victims. I'll do whatever that requires. Remember when Gran Torino was depicted as like this old imbecile? Even if that alone doesn't tell us much, it gives us a place to start at least. Yeah, I guess it's better than place at the end I of the day. You. We appreciate your hard work. What do you, how do we even know this lady isn't involved? Who do you trust? It's like 8 million heroes, 100,000 heroes. Yeah, I mean... I'm <laughs> He's just hanging out, after all. hanging out with twice. <laughs> I feel like they get along well. Black coffee with lots of milk and tons of sugar. That's exactly how I like it. Hospital. The pieces have fallen into place. 
Oh, Hawk? Hawk's got something. The ultimate being whom all for one and I have sought all this time. Better than I ever imagined. It is Shigaraki. I was wondering about this. He is going to inherit it. He's the ultimate... Nomu, is that what's going on? One of the coolest things about this experience, you know, watching this episode and reading Vigilantes, is feeling this sudden rush. Like, there's been a vacuum this whole time. You know, I've been watching Aizawa and liking him, and I think, you know, mostly understanding what he's all about. And then suddenly all the, the gaps were filled with, like, this richness of character. Like, of course he's that way, you know? He's not just the man, it's hard fought. He struggled. Like, he went through some of the, the very same things we're seeing in the show from the students now, where they have to align so many different things at once. It's like who they see themselves as, or who they see themselves becoming, with what their natural gifts are. And those two things don't always align with each other. And refining both of those things simultaneously, which is pretty solid metaphor, I think, for like just life and growing up. You know, there's there's who you actually are. There's what you envision yourself being or becoming. And then there's the hard fought battle going through trials and tribulations to reconcile and harmonize the two. And it's so complicated because there's so many moving parts. You know, it's like what you think you want to be is maybe not actually what you'd be most happy as and who you think you are is probably not what you actually are and what you think your gifts are might not be what your real gifts are and you can't manufacture the full picture of that in a vacuum just like sitting by yourself thinking you have to like interact with the world the world is what gives you the feedback because you can't trick the world into giving you what you want the world is just what it is it's more powerful than us unless of course through self-delusion and denying reality which is not a solution obviously it just makes people feel worse because we're all aware on certain key levels at least the areas which we're deluding ourselves specifically because the world doesn't give us what we think it ought to be giving us under those assumptions and so there's some conflict there inner conflict there that emerges and Aizawa from the beginning has been this really really cool example of someone who stands out ironically by not standing out you know he's like this lone hero not seeking credit in a world of people looking to show off their smiles and at least in times of peace capitalize on their image for fame or money or glory or whatever he's very much not that and he's very much okay not being that which gives him this feeling of real strength real sort of self-mastery and now a lot of those gaps have been filled for me he struggled massively as Shinzo is struggling, as we've seen a few characters struggle with their quirks that aren't flashy. But he's not a flashy hero, that's not who he is. He's someone who cares about people's lives, and so he's someone who's happy to support, and he's happy to not have to be fake. And that takes some real strength. I mean, it takes some real strength when the entire industry, all your teachers, all your peers, are telling you that this is what being a hero means, or to put it just in life terms, this is what being successful means, yet having sort of the strength of character to define that for oneself despite other influences. And in fact, I would argue or guess that that's often where real success is to be found. You know, I think a lot of the more commonly laid pathways are there and prevalent because it sort of is this safe baseline, has a high floor, let's say. But I think the real glory or the highest ceiling is to be found in that kind of personal and self-identification, the personal struggle to find what that is, and also the perseverance to fail towards that goal, since failure is usually an inevitable part of success initially, while everyone's beating down on you to not be that way. You know, it's, it's tough. And also just the connection he has to practicality, the connection he has to perfection, because for him, it's not just this idle value he manufactured. He watched a friend die as a result of that sort of hubris. So didn't think this was possible, but I end this episode with a lot more respect and appreciation for Aizawa as a character. He really is the man. One thing that's unresolved from the comic though is, did he ever go back to the, the cat cafe? Where is, what was her name? Sushi. Sushi the cat. Hopefully not a no-move.